Our today's question is from Harry, who wonders about basic properties of the parabolas, about the equations of the parabolas, and how to graph the parabola knowing its equation. As I told while discussing an equation of the line in one of our previous videos, an equation itself is just a law according to which out of all the numerous points on the coordinate plane, we would only pick the ones conforming this law. This means that if the law is the following, y equals to x minus 3 to the second power plus 2, it means that according to this law, in order to define the y-coordinate, we would have to take the x-coordinate, subtract 3, then take the difference to the second power and add 2. And we could have taken lots of such x's and then uh, calculate their y's, and thus we would obtain a lot of points, and having connected them, then we would obtain a curve. And this would have been correct, but it's much easier to deal with equations like this if you know some of their properties. Now, to understand fully what kind of a curve you are dealing with, it's best that you first uh, reduce it to the form where the left side of the equation contains only single y and the right side contains uh, the rest of the expression with all the brackets open and all the operations performed. As you can see, our example right here is, uh, has already perfect left side, it only contains the single y. This means that we'll only have to deal with the right side of the equation, so we go like this y equals to square x minus 6 x's plus 9 plus 2 or square x minus 6 x's plus 11. An equation of such kind is called a square equation. As a matter of fact, any equation of this form, i.e y equals to a times square x plus b times x plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, is called a square equation or an equation of the parabola. The free term in an equation of the parabola is its y-intercept, or the point where the curve crosses the y-axis. Let's now try and graph some parabolas, and we'll start from the most simple example. y equals to square x. To sketch this curve, we're going to need a few points. Let's find them and fill in the coordinate table. I'll pick a few random values for the x-coordinate, and then I'll substitute them into the given equation and then I would calculate the y's, and thus I would obtain a couple of points. So I'm picking 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And therefore, my y's are the following. coordinate table. 
This time my axis would be 4, 2, 0, negative 2, and negative 4. Now I'm substituting these values into this equation and calculating the corresponding y's. So I have square 4, which is 16, times 1 fourth, which is 4, and plus 1, which is 5. Then I have square 2, which is 4, times 1 fourth, which yields to 1, and plus 1, which is 2. Then I have 1, then I have 2 again, and 5 again. Let's now mark these points on a plane and connect them. We now have the points with coordinates 0 and 1, 2 and 2, 4 and 5, and negative 2 and 2, negative 4 and 5. Again, the left branch is symmetrical to the right branch. So this is our second parabola, described by an equation y equals to 1 fourth times square x and plus 1. We can see that the list is the coefficient standing next to the square x in the equation of a parabola. The more sloping is a graph, and vice versa. The bigger is the number standing to the, to the square x, the more narrow is the graph. Um, we can also notice that the y-intercept for the green curve is 1, as it is said in its equation. And we have such a point with the coordinates 0 and 1. As for the red curve, the free term in this equation is equal to 0. And the curve crosses the y-axis in the point with coordinates 0 and 0. So, it is true. Let's now consider the third parabola. Described by the following equation. We'll now, we'll now have y equal to negative square x minus 3. And again, here comes the coordinate table. Again, we're picking random values for the x coordinate. And substituting them into the equation and calculating y's. So we have square 2, which is 4, and then negative 4 minus 3 yields to negative 7. Then we have square 1, which is 1, then negative 1 minus 3, which yields to negative 4. And then we have negative 3, and again negative 4, and negative 7. Let's now grab this curve, this curve. Here is the point with the coordinates 0 and negative 3, and then 1 and negative 4, 2 and negative 7, and then the symmetrical left branch, negative 1 and negative 4, and then negative 2 and negative 7. Having connected these points, we're obtaining the third parabola described by an equation y equals to negative square x minus 3. We can now notice that if a coefficient standing next to the square x is a positive number, as we had in our previous examples, the branches of the parabola open up, and if this coefficient is a negative number, the branches of the parabola are directed downwards. 
And now the dessert. And what's for dessert? For dessert, we will have the parabola we discussed at the very beginning. The one I'm raising at Everest right now. But I will write it down one more time. Now, as you remember, we reduced it to the form square x minus 6 x is and plus 11. Again, we're going to need a coordinate plane, a few points. And then we'll mark them on the coordinate plane and connect. So this time we'll pick the following axis. 0, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Again, I'm substituting these axes into the equation and calculate the y's. So I have 11, then square 2, which is 4, minus 12, which is negative 8, plus 11, which is 3. Then square 3, which is 9, minus 18, which is negative 1, then plus 11. And we have 2. Then square 4, which is 16, minus 24, negative 8, plus 11, 3 again. And then 36 minus 36 plus 11 is 11. Now I'm marking these points on the plane, one by one. The first one is with coordinates 0 and 11. Then there is the one with coordinates 2 and 3. Then there is the one with coordinates 3 and 2. And then 4 and 3. And then 6 and 11. So, this black curve is the parabola described by an equation square x minus 6 x's and plus 11. Once again, the y-intercept for this curve is 11. Now, I've considered a lot of examples today. Let's sum up all this information. First, the free term in an equation of the parabola is its y-intercept, or it is the point where the curve crosses the y-axis. Second, the bigger is the number standing next to the square s, the more narrow is the parabola, and vice versa. The less it is, or the closer to zero is this number, like in this case, the more sloping is the graph. And third, if a coefficient standing next to the square x is a positive number, the branches of the parabola open up. And if it is negative, the branches are directed downwards. Hopefully, now parabolas won't seem as mysterious as they did before. And Harry will now be able to graph any parabola and find its y-intercept with no hesitation. So, enjoy your parabolas!